can also better study variation across tissue types. So what are enhancers? We know enhancers are short, non-coding segments of DNA. We know that they are tissue specific. We know that they're often highly conserved. But what don't we know? We don't know where they are. And only very few enhancers have been characterized in vivo. And although they do contribute to the cellular phenotype, they remain largely uncharted. When an enhancer binds to a certain protein like a transcription factor, the last thing and the most important piece of information that we do know is that it can often uh, drive transcription of certain genes. So for some early insights, the Vista Enhancer browser essentially looks for candidate enhancers based on sequence conservation, solely based on sequence conservation, and does experiments to try to validate if those enhancers are in fact true enhancers. And then they give us a bunch of information about their experiments on the website. So, so far, they've identified 1575 candidate enhancers, and they've reported a lot of their information regarding how they try to verify those enhancers on their website. And one really cool piece of data that they do report is actually um, embryonic image data. So this essentially tells us, is an enhancer active? And if so, in what tissues or what regions? But overall, this is a, a essentially a small-scale project as it is completely dependent on sequence conservation for its predictive model. So is there a way that we can upscale this project? And in fact, there is. The Roadmap Epigenomics Project essentially looks through a hundred different cellular tissue types and conducted a series of different assays, series of different epigenomic assays. And following that, this data was all summarized by Ernest et al who functionally re-annotated the entire human genome. My immediate mentor, Newman, and others then took the enhancer-like regions that were summarized and did an activity-based clustering, therefore making a total of 36 different clusters. And just like that, from the 1575 number, now we have one million candidate enhancer regions. So what is this heat map showing us? On the x-axis, you have one million genomic regions. And on the y-axis, you have different tissue types. And here are the 36 different clusters the genomic regions are clustered into. The intersection of the heat map essentially tells us the activity level of the enhancer. And um, this was conducted shortly after the, the clustering was performed. And, but the real big question that now arises are, are these predicted enhancers actually real? And to answer that question, we first have to do the crucial yet tedious step of pre-processing the data. We take the 1575 elements of the Visa database in a faster format, and we convert them into a format that we can work with. Afterwards, we can easily find the intersection or overlap between the different roadmap clusters and the Visa database. However, are these intersections actually significant? Are the enhancer states from the Visa database evolutionary conserved? And those questions go hand in hand because the Visa enhancers are evolutionary conserved. They're based on uh, sequence conservation. So to answer that question, we first conduct a permutation test. We take all the DNA elements of the Vista database and we randomly shuffle them around the human genome while preserving their size. We then take overlaps between the shuffled Vista database and the roadmap clusters and we do this 100,000 times. We obtain an empirical p-value from the permutation test by the number of permutations with overlaps that were greater than our actual overlaps divided by the total number of permutations we performed, which is 100,000. But there is something that is confounding. As the standard permutation test does not necessarily give us an intact or a standard structure to the human genome. So how can we bypass this problem? We perform a circular permutation test, which is virtually identical to the permutation test with the exception that it takes into account, um, the, the method of shuffling is different. It takes into account an intact structure of the human genome. And it, uh, shuffles the Vista database in essentially a circular fashion. So here are some examples of, um, of circular permutations. As you can see, each element is being transposed and one, one to the right in a circular fashion. And it is a much more conservative metric as opposed to our standard permutation test. And that is displayed in this graph. Here I've shown the negative log of the p-values for all the different clusters of the roadmap data. Um, and through the permutation test and then through the circular permutation test. And that deviation from that 45 degree line essentially shows us how the circular permutation test is indeed a more conservative metric. 
Now, once we've performed the circular permutation test, we can use the results from it, the p-values we obtained, to find out which are our top-ranked clusters, which, of, which clusters have the, have the lowest p-values. And these clusters are very important clusters that we can later look at, as they're also very, very highly enriched for enhancers in the DC database. And that brings me on to my second question. Are enhancer clusters driving tissue-specific expression? And um, more simply stated, are they enriched for experimentally validated VISTA enhancers? So how do we address this question? Are they positively validated? We perform a Fisher's test across every single cluster. So here briefly, I've just shown a depiction of, the, of a two by two um, contingency table that I performed my Fisher's exact test on. Uh, I did this for every single cluster, and the way we obtain our test statistic is the A divided by the B all over the C divided by the D. I then later ranked all of these clusters based on the p-value obtained from the Fisher's exact test, which kind of gives us an indication of which clusters are most positively validated. Now, after our enrichments have essentially been, been done, I've shown here, I've annotated this heat map, where you have a lot of brain-specific clusters, and um, for these different brain-specific clusters, I've found the enhancers that overlapped between the VISTA and the roadmap uh, data, okay, looked cross reference these enhancers with the VISTA database, and obtained um, embryonic Im images from the VISTA database to just give you a depiction of the assays, and this shows positive functional validation of our enriched enhancers. Now the next question we want to address is, are the roadmap enhancers really tissue specific? And to answer this question, I looked at the overlaps that I got between the VSTA and the roadmap clusters, I cross-referenced them with the VSTA, and I ran a running tally of the positively validated experiments that were done. And I showed briefly here one cluster, cluster 14, which is a, uh, which is a, 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 a which is a cluster specific to uh, brain brain activity that is uh, positively validated for four brain expression. And if you later look at my running tally, again cluster 14, you can see that four brain expression is indeed prevalent. So now, what I really want to end with is a first step in positively validating a roadmap enhancer using a VSTA assay. I'm talking about an enhancer that is in the same cluster as a validated VSTA enhancer, but has not had an assay done on it. And essentially what we do to, to, to tackle that step is we look, look at the problem through a, a conservation perspective. We delve more into the pipeline. So individual clusters are analyzed more closely by studying enhancer sequence conservation, for each cluster, we use an average of mammalian fast cons values, or essentially conservation values, to determine how conserved each enhancer is or are. And here I've just provided a box plot, which is a, a depiction that you can see where you have your 36 different clusters and you have essentially a degree of conservation. And the idea behind this really is if you're looking at two enhancers, both in the same cluster, both that are similar in tissue specificity, both at the same kind of conservation levels, and one has been validated by the VISTA database and the other hasn't, then what, what should we do? We should, we should send it for a, a VISTA assay and potentially discover a new enhancer. So in conclusion, some of the things that we brought to the table, our enhancer states about evolutionary conserved, evolutionarily conserved, we conducted the permutation, the circular permutation test, and we, we uh, found that this question is indeed true. Our enhancer clusters driving tissue-specific gene expression using our, our Fisher's test. We uh, verified this as well. Are, they, are the roadmap enhancers really tissue-specific? Indeed, they are. And we have taken that first step towards positively validating new candidate enhancers using VSTA assays. In the future, things that we would like to focus on is we want to link the enhancers to genes that are proximal, genes that are nearby. We want to identify groups of enhancers, enhancers that are similar in conservation and tissue specificity, that essentially have maybe similar functionality later down the road. We want to integrate our pipeline with the transcription factor binding motifs, with protein-protein interaction studies, so we, we don't necessarily have to stay at the, at the gene level, or the, I should say, the DNA sequence level. And lastly, to reiterate that wet lab validation step We've only taken a first step where we're now looking at enhancers, looking at their conservation, looking at their tissue specificity. So if you want to see if some of these predictive enhancers are actually verified, you'd have to come back next year. So <laughs> to uh, briefly go through uh, who I want to acknowledge, Dr. Gautam Mielman, postdoc by rank, but to me as a full professor, 
Uh, <laughs> I, don't think I, I don't think I could have asked for a, for a better mentor. Mr. Luis Ferreira, TA of the class, graduate student at the HST Big Program, alumni of the HST Summer Institute, big shoes to fill, and uh, definitely a, a great resource and very, very helpful. Um, Dr. Manolis Kellis, a lab I wanted to work in for a very, very long time. Very grateful for the opportunity and uh, very honored to be here. Dr. Sonal Javeri, this presentation wouldn't be nearly where it's at without your help. Um, the Big Summer Institute, Muhammad et al., if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think nothing essentially beats uh, spending nine weeks doing bioinformatics research with uh, like-minded students. So, uh, and last but not least, uh, Dr. Suzanne Churchill and um, Ms. Barbara Mullen. Um, when I first walked into this uh, this new research building, I didn't I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, and frankly, I still I still don't know what exactly I want to do. But after learning so much and from the great opportunity, I think bioinformatics is definitely somewhere in my future. And I would also like to say I would like to end with a quote. I might be misquoting here from JFK. Uh, I believe it was. Ask not what I2B2 can do for you, ask what you can do for I2B2. Thank you all very much. I'll love to answer any questions. Very nice presentation. I was going to say, I'm going to see a lot of these presentations by you in the future, <laughs> at least on the web. Um, but I have a very um, low level, you know, a very low level question, which probably re which certainly reflects my ignorance. So. Uh, the tensor elements are DNA elements. And so the part I don't understand is even before your research, when you say VISTA shows which tissue it's acting in, on what basis the, the, the enhancer is present in all cells, presumably as a DNA mode. So what is it showing? What's, what's, what, is, what is it reporting out on? Right, so to reiterate the question, I believe you were saying that how, how is the, the VISTA showing tissue specificity? Yeah. So essentially how the VISTA transgenic mouse model assays are done is I believe they take a, um, first they're candidate and enhancer region. Um, they amplify that, uh, that region and, uh, and clone it um, upstream of a heat shock protein. And close to that protein is a, a lax C reporter. And um, they essentially inject the they inject that into, into mouse mice embryo and create a pseudo-pregnant um, female mouse. And using that, they, they do several different assays, very several different tissue-specific assays. And I think on day 11.5, they, uh, they kind of harvest the embryo, look at the embryonic scars, and then see if there was a tissue-specific. So they embryo. inject the reporter vector to, to be near the enhancer. Uh, right, right, oh, right. Got it. And they do that in several different places. And you sometimes see of expression sometimes. So they did 1,500 such assays. 1,575 such assays were done for each enhancer region. Um, some are positively validated by that, some are not. So uh, we do focus in on, on those specific drugs. Uh, any other questions? That was an impressive answer to that question. Yeah. So thanks. I'm here till next Friday. <laughs> <laughs>